Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're hitting the Pennsylvania Turnpike and we're heading west towards Pittsburgh, Steel City. Join us as we venture out to the Pittsburgh Zoo, check out the Duquesne Incline, and stay at Mountaintop Campground. Our adventure awaits. Well, our adventure starts on the Pennsylvania Turnpike. Some facts about the Turnpike is it was America's first long distance superhighway. It opened off October 1st, 1940, and basically led to the creation of the interstate system across the country. About 360 miles long, spanning east to west from New Jersey all the way out to Ohio. Originally when it opened, it had seven tunnels, which were considered a significant engineering feats at the time. Today it only has five of those tunnels still in use due to bypasses that were built in the 1960s. One thing to note about it is uh, Mid-Atlantic and East Coast, they charge tolls. This is a fairly expensive toll road. Just going from Harrisburg, where we got on the highway, to uh, Pittsburgh, cost us $42.20. You've got to remember you're paying for your truck and your camper as you go through the toll. So you're basically paying what a tractor trailer would pay to travel the road. Here we go, now we're uh, trying to find our way to the Breezewood truck stop. It's a good stopping point, it's about halfway east to west uh, on the turnpike. We had a little, uh, little goof up here on the directions. We got off the wrong exit. TA truck stop to the left and we can only turn right. So now we got to, uh, now we got to find a turnaround. Luckily, we were able to find this uh, spot here. It was big enough for us to turn around. Our camper, we have a open range. It's a 310 BHS. The overall length of that is, is about 38 feet or so. And then my truck, got a crew cab, Dodge Ram with the long bed. So that's about 22 feet long. So overall, we're looking right about 60 feet as we roll down the road. Here's the TA truck stop Breezewood. We have a diesel truck so we can use the diesel lanes. A good thing to have if you have a diesel truck is the open roads uh, refueling card. It gives you a discount at most truck stops across the country. Open roads has a, an app so you can search the closest truck stop to your area and it shows you what the discounted price is. A lot of times it'll be anywhere from you know, 10 cents a gallon, anywhere I've seen as much as 60 cents or more that you save per gallon. Here we spent uh, 71 bucks on about 18 gallons of fuel. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that like button. Hit that bell icon, that way you can notif be notified when we upload new videos. Another good thing to do while you're at a truck stop, you know, walk around, I got a infrared uh, heat gun. You know, check, the, just check the temperature of your hubs. You know, they're, they're gonna be warm, especially on a day like this. This was a you know, hot mid-July day. Probably about 90 degree air temperature, so the hubs are reading, you know, 120, 130s. So you always want to check that. If they're going to be too hot to even touch with your hand, you can touch with the back of your hand. If it's too hot for you to hold it, then your hubs are overheating. You probably either have a brake problem or a bearing problem. Well, we stopped at the truck stop here at Breezewood to get some lunch. Say hi, Tango. Say hi. Here we are coming up on a tunnel. Unfortunately, we had to uh, stop due to um, something's going on. Something was going on. Yeah, we don't know exactly what they had the tunnel closed when we got there. Yeah, as we were pulling up, I don't know if you can see in the video here that uh, one of the construction trucks, you know, the uh, pen dot trucks pulled out and blocked the lane and kept everything going in. All right, now we're back on the road, continuing our trip towards uh, Pittsburgh. We're off the highway now. We're Heading up towards a mountaintop campground. It's 
probably one of the closest campgrounds to Pittsburgh. There's a few others in the area. I think they, they're, these guys are probably the closest. It was what, about 20 minutes yeah. or so from, from Pittsburgh. Maybe it was like 15 miles. They do have uh, directions on their website as well as the confirmation email from your reservation telling you how to go because uh, some of these roads are a bit narrow. I think the directions they sent were probably about 20 minutes longer than what uh, Google Maps was showing us. And this area here is really tight. This road gets very windy and twisty going up the mountain to the campground, so you have to be very careful um, on both sides. Up here, you're gonna make a right. As you go up this road here, you'll notice on the left-hand side, there's a barrier because the guardrail is no longer there. So like right here, you have to be very careful coming around this turn. And actually when we left the campground, we went the Google route because we traveled that for a couple days, gone to the zoo and the Pittsburgh area. Mm -hmm. And we didn't have any, any problems at all right. navigating that road. I mean, some of the spots were a little tight, but if you're pretty comfortable trailing your uh, camper and you shouldn't have a problem. Now, the mountaintop campground it was a it was a nice campground good views obviously as the name says it's, it was on top of a mountain mm -hmm. we had a little uh, little mix up we ended up getting there a day early yep but the uh, the owners were very accommodating they were able to find us another spot for uh, for the night and we stayed stayed in that spot for one night and then got up the next morning and moved to our spot once the other people had uh, I've checked out. So here is like a self check-in area. You just pull up and you go over to the little building on the left and you um, you find your name there and that's your, your check-in slip that has all your information for the campground on it. Uh, obviously we didn't have ours because we checked in a day early. But in the end it all worked out. Ended up pulling around, called them on the phone. The guy came out in his golf cart and uh, showed us to a different site that we stayed for the night. One thing to note about this campground is there's no activities, there's no swimming pool, there's no playground for the kids, no dog park. It's pretty much just a nice place to stay while you're in the Pittsburgh area. Other than that, there's nothing really to do at the campground except what you bring with you. Here we are the next morning, heading to the site that we originally had booked. which was really nice because it backed right up to that overlook looking down the mountain. Beautiful sunset views. So here's the uh, laundry room slash shower room. Everything you have to pay for except for uh, using the, the toilet and the dryers. Um, you have to pay to use the showers. Um, you have to pay to use the washer. Very nice, clean building. Obviously, it doesn't look like many people use the showers there. So here we are at the Pittsburgh Zoo. For your birthday. For my 40th birthday. Um, it was a very interesting way of getting in there. Um, you have to go up an escalator to get to the top of the zoo, but... As long as you're not claustrophobic, you shouldn't have a problem. Or have any motion issues. <laughs> it was a pretty nice zoo. It's one of the older zoos in the country. I think it was formed in the uh, late 1800s, 1897 or something around there. If you know exactly when it was formed, make sure you, you know, put that down in the comments below. A lot of nice animals. Seems like a lot of the animals weren't out though, because I don't know if it was either too hot for them or, yeah. or if it's feeding time. Right, we didn't get to see any polar bears. 
Definitely too hot for polar bears. <laughs> we saw the lions, we saw tigers, the flamingos. I don't think the rhinoceroses were out, were they? I remember seeing those. No, I don't remember seeing them. It's a smaller zoo. It didn't take too long to walk around. I think we probably were there four hours maybe or something like yeah, that. Yep. This is lunchtime for the elephants, so they were inside and not out where you can see them out in their little area outside, which is pretty interesting because a lot of people don't get to see this part of of the zoo when they're right. you know, when they're inside feeding. Right, you don't get to see the background a lot of times, so it was interesting to see how the animals were <clears throat> kept back there during feeding time. Speaking of inside, they had a uh, bat cave that you can go into in one of their buildings, and whew, if you go in there, hold your breath because <laughs> we could barely right. uh, we could barely stand in there. Right. Had the penguins there. A little disappointed, you know, Pittsburgh Pittsburgh penguins. I thought they would have a a really uh, cool penguin display. Sea otters love to play, so all they did was roll around and play. Roll around in the water, pretty much. I never really saw them come out. So here we are at the Duquesne Incline, which is a very historic sightseeing. Uh, landmark in Pittsburgh. Yeah, Pittsburgh has I think at least two inclines. Mm -hmm. If you know of any other ones, you know, let us know in the comments. And I think it's pronounced Duquesne. If, if we were saying it wrong, let us know. But it's definitely something to do uh, to check out when you're uh, in Pittsburgh. Beautiful views at the top of the mountain. Yeah. I think for four of us, it's tough, it only cost us $20. Yeah, it was for a round for trip. For a round trip. Yep. You can go one way and it's, it's half that price. Inside here, inside the building, this is a lot of this is the original machinery from uh, the late 1800s when this thing was built. Maintained it and uh, kept it up. It's still still running. I think that cable, steel cable, is, uh, is an inch and a half thick. I think pulling uh, the cable cars up and down. There's two, so they work in tandem like this. One's going up, one's going down. Anytime it's running. From the top there, the uh, yeah, the the view, the view and stand, beautiful uh, views there of the three rivers. Went to, uh, I think the area was called the terminal. It's like a older industrial area that was converted into you know, shops. This here is the Aslan Brewery. It's a local brewery. It's pretty good beers. The kids had to go get candy, so we adventured over to uh, Grandpa Joe's. Grandpa Joe's. There's so much candy in this place. It's the most candy I've ever seen in one place. And I mean. There's a section where like the kids can fill the small old box and it's like five dollars and you can shove as much candy as you can in this little <laughs> five box and then it's like They definitely tried to shove they, as much as they could yeah. in there. Where they have all different kinds of candy from around the world and they got the larger, you know, box style right. candy you can buy. I like candy. I could have spent a lot of money in here, but it took some self control right. not to. <laughs> and then we got back and this sweet little thing here, Tango or Belgian Malinois. Decided to try to uh, exit the camper while we were gone. I guess he missed us and didn't want to be left inside. Luckily, I had some uh, Dorabond right. tape, taped it up. And now we got to fix that. Join us for our next video, so be sure to click that subscribe button. We're heading to Elkhart Campground in uh, Elkhart, Indiana for the Open Range 2024 rally. That video's out now, so click on that link for that video. Stay tuned for what happens in Elkhart and when we visit more ride.